Good morning, and God's peace. Welcome everyone to our Good Friday morning service. Let's begin our service with singing two songs, number 93, Away to Calvary Leadeth, and Stricken, Smitten, and Afflicted.
Good morning and God's peace to each of you this Good Friday morning and what a good Friday for us that our Savior has paid our sin debt completely. But as I remember from my very youth, we, we often heard that it was a, translated from the Finnish, that it was a, a long Friday. And surely it was a long and a weary day for our Savior and our Redeemer. Not only the natural suffering, but as he took upon himself exactly what we are. And as God spoke then through the prophet Isaiah in the 43rd chapter, that our Savior and our Redeemer, that he was made to serve with our sins. And that we have wearied him with our iniquities. But it does not stop there. It says that I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. And how is this possible then? Because, as our Savior and our Redeemer himself has said, that I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. So if God by his grace allows that we by faith can take hold of this, is it such then that we can sing the words then with the songwriter, that my sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to his cross, and I bear it no more, that praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. So as we turn for our scripture reading this morning, We'll turn then to the Psalm of David, Psalm 31, and we'll read verses 9 through 24. And we read these words then in, in Jesus' name. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. Mine eye is consumed with grief, yea, my soul and my belly. For my life is spent with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength faileth because of mine iniquity, and my bones are consumed. I was a reproach among all mine enemies, but especially among my neighbors, and a fear to mine acquaintance that they did see me without fled from me. I am forgotten as a dead man out of mind. I am like a broken vessel, for I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side. While they took counsel together against me, they devised to take away my life. But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. Let me be not ashamed, O my Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed and let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. O oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them which trust in thee before the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of men. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he hath showed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before mine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplications when I cried unto thee. O love the Lord, all ye his saints. For the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let us pray. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, as we gather together here today as your children around your holy, eternal word, and even this day as we remember that great work then that was done for us, oh, Father, we thank you then that you so loved the world that you sent your Son that while we had no strength and were yet sinners and were enemies, that you 
sent him here because of the great love of your heart to seek and to save us from who and what we are. Oh, Father, we pray that you would grant that for every heart here and all men everywhere, that they would be brought to repentance and faith in thee, that all men might see your Son who was lifted up for us, and that they might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, that by any means that they might obtain then unto the resurrection. So, O oh Father, we thank you for that full and complete work then through your dear Son. And we ask even as we are around your word this morning that you would be with our brother Gary then as he rises to read and to speak from your word that you would give him all that he needs, that fill him with your Holy Spirit, then open that word to him, open it to us who listen, that we could hear and receive those things then which we need. And Father, we pray this morning for those who mourn the loss of loved ones, those who suffer because of illness of body or mind, those who are in need of healing, those who have things maybe that we don't even know, that, oh, Father, be with them, lift them up, and point all of our eyes, then, to that great work, then, which your Son has done for us. And lead us onward, then, all the days of our life, oh, keep us in that most precious faith then. So that one day as our time comes then to leave this sin-cursed earth, that we will be trusting completely and fully in the merits of your dear son. And then that our faith would be turned to sight and our hope would come to fruition. And that is in this life that we here see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. But, oh, grant us to see the glories then of what you have prepared for us then in heaven above, where we will see thee and thy son as you are. And there, with a new tongue, we will be able to thank and praise you for eternity, for that great grace then, that great love, that free gift that has been imparted to us. So, Father, we commend this time then into thy care and keeping, and hear us as we pray that perfect prayer that your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we continue now, we will sing song number 81, Alas, and did my Savior bleed.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's with joy that we gather today, on this Good Friday, to consider the Word of God. And may it be a blessing to everyone today who is in the hearing of this Word. Before we read our text, I'd like to speak a little bit about the psalm that the brother read. Of course, it was a psalm of David. And we believe, do we not, that David, even in writing this psalm, wrote with the direction of the Spirit of God. And in so many of these psalms, we see Jesus Christ in them. But sometimes I believe it's this way that we forget about the humanity of Jesus Christ. We know that he was true God and true man, but we forget, I believe this, that we forget about his ability to have sorrow and grief, you know, because sometimes we think of him as the all-powerful and all-knowing God, and we look at him from today's perspective, you know, the risen, powerful Lord Jesus. But on this earth, you know, he was also a man. And he's, even here in this psalm, he speaks through David of himself. Just think about that where he says that mine eye is consumed with grief and my soul and my belly, just the whole, he was just full of grief. And my life is spent with grief, and my years with sighing. That's the heart of Jesus Christ. And you know that it's because of you and me. That's the, part, that's the problem with this, that we have to know. And my strength faileth because of mine iniquity. Certainly it's easy to see that, well, it's David speaking about his iniquity and sorrow over his own sin. And you have that too, don't you? That sometimes the, just the thought of our sin and our sinfulness that we have, it, just, it is grievous, isn't it? But Jesus, because our iniquities were put upon him, he also had that. And he felt the iniquity of us all. And also in this psalm, he speaks about those that slandered him. They lied about him. And they said all kinds of evil things about him. And that hurt also. But of course, in this psalm also, he writes, and David writes also, that yet I trust in thee, O Lord, thou art my God. So that's, it's so beautiful, the heart of Jesus and his concern and his care for us, but also his great grief and suffering for us. I thought today I would read from the, the Gospel of John, and this morning my thought is to read the first part, which is in Jesus in Pilate's judgment hall. Because we remember, do we not, that even we confess in the creed that he suffered under Pontius Pilate. And then this evening I thought we would consider Jesus on the cross of Calvary. So this morning we're going to read from John 19 verses 1 through 16. And we'll read that in Jesus' name. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers planted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, 
that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth. Wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivereth me unto thee hath the greater sin." And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover, and about the sixth hour, and he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him, therefore, unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. Amen. When Jesus was accused, it was falsely. It was false accusation against him. And we should remember, even this morning hour, how that all by itself was so against the will of God. We remember, do we not, the, the commandment that thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And that's a good place for us to stop and consider ourselves that are we false witnesses? Are we ever a false witness? Do we ever uh, speak wrongly about others? This is part of our human nature that we, all of us, I know, struggle with this. We might tell the truth about somebody and we justify that but we're not seeing the whole thing. It's only a half-truth. And that's how it was with Jesus. They, they accused him of certain things that they said, that he said, but they put it in a wrong measure, a wrong context. Jesus said, I am the truth. It's also the way. But the truth is something that is so precious and dear, and may it always be something that, 
that's within us that we would want to always say the truth. Also, we'll, we'll consider that a little bit more when we consider Pilate. But when in, this, in the beginning of our text here, Pilate has Jesus scourged, and he had him whipped. And in that whipping, of course, we realize that it was not just a little spanking that Jesus got, but it was much more than that, and it was enough to draw blood from Jesus. And also, they put a crown of thorns on him. And this was for two reasons. One, just to mock him because he he was the king of the Jews and he truly was, but it also was to inflict more pain on Jesus. You know, they could have made a crown out of something else, but no, they made a crown so that it would hurt, so that it would poke into him and it also would cause some more of his precious blood to shed. And then they also put on him a purple robe. In those days, the purple was a very expensive coloring to get because it was made from, I believe it was some kind of shellfish. It wasn't like today when we can buy colors of any kind at no difference in cost. But then it was only, it was something expensive that only royalty and kings wore. So again, they were making mockery of him as the king, a king with a purple robe and a crown on his head. And Jesus received that. He allowed them Remember now, he is the son of God. He has all power, even though he's true man at the time. He could have, just by moving his arm or just with one word, that robe could have disappeared, the crown could have disappeared. But no, Jesus, in his grief and his sorrow and his anguish, allowed himself to be so mocked. It's just beyond comprehension of how our Savior went through this, allowed himself to do this to happen to him. But we remember that even though we know that he was, had the power to change it, the Bible also tells us that he laid down his life for us and had the power to take it up again. He did this because of his great love for you and for me. Oh, such matchless love that is shown here by our Savior. And not only did they put these on, but then with the words they further mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews! And then hit him some more, smote him with their hands. How many did that? I don't know. But there was more than one that did it because it says they smote him with their hands. Spiritual hatred is so grievous. You know, it's one thing that even as little children, boys and girls, get in fights with each other. And sometimes we as adults don't act very adult either. We get into tuffles too. But little children, they fight with each other and it's not right and good. Little children that you would do that. But little children often they quickly forget And it's just like an instant and it's gone. But these people, they hated Jesus because of the words that he spoke unto them. He 
pointed out to them right into their hearts, he pointed out that they were hypocrites and liars and they didn't believe the Bible as, as, the, as the scriptures were written. They didn't even believe that. But they were only going about to seek their own honor and glory. And so they hated him. And that's why they could do this to him. Pilate, they're the one in charge of all these people. Remember, this is Pilate is a, a Roman I mean, he's a part of the Roman government over the land of Israel, and he sees all of this. And he's, he's already spoken to Jesus, and he finds no fault in him. He finds nothing against the Roman law and what he knew of the Jewish law. He said, There's, I don't find any fault in him. And so he brings him, he says, I find no fault in him. And it tells us here that Jesus came forth. And I mean, he didn't do this on his own. I'm sure the pilot directed him, come, come over here now. And here comes Jesus walking. And he's wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And he's obviously, he's in agony. And Pilate looks at him and he looks at the people and he says, behold the man, just look at him. Don't you have any compassion for him? Don't you care that this is happening to this man? I mean, look what he's gone through already and look what we are putting him through. And he's probably, you know, with the scourging and the slapping and the hitting of him and the crown on his head, you know, there's probably blood on him. And obviously he's looking, looking like he's been beaten up pretty badly. Pilate says, behold the man. And instead of instilling compassion in these people, the chief priests and the officers, they saw him like that and they say, Crucify him. It's not enough that he has suffered this much. Put him to death and make mockery of him in his death so that it would be right in the very open for all to see and put him to death. And Pilate says, okay, take him. But I don't find any fault in this man. And the Jews they are there saying that we have a law. And of course, it's from Leviticus. You know, that if anyone would, um, he ought to die because he made himself the son of God. In other words, they are accusing Jesus of just all of a sudden saying that I am God. You know, if that happened today among us, you know, and there's people in this world who have done that. You know, some have said, I, you know, I am Jesus Christ. I've come back. And we know that that's not true. He didn't, he hasn't come back yet. But that's what they accused him of doing. And so they were justified. They actually used that as an excuse to put him to death. Pilate, when he heard that, tells us that he was more afraid. That caused him fear. And again, he went into the judgment hall with Jesus. But let's consider Pilate a little bit here. Pilate had authority there. And he knew that Jesus was innocent. And he knew that there was no fault in him. But yet he went along. He went along with the Jews who wanted to put Jesus to death. Here's another place for us to consider ourselves. Pilate knew that some, this was wrong, and yet 
he went along with it. Let's not be like Pilate. You know, when something is wrong, let's be strong enough to say, that's not right. And let's, and even more carefully consider Pilate, I, I'd like to consider Pilate today as, as a Roman who probably uh, believed in some of the Roman gods. Um, he wasn't a Jew. I mean, I don't believe he believed in the Jewish religion. And he certainly didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. But yet he was troubled. He knew something was not right here. But Christians, you that have the Holy Spirit, you should know, don't we know that? You know, when something is not right, most of the time, we Christians, we know right away, this is not right. It might be just the little light voice within us. We sometimes would use a scriptural term like a still small voice. We know right, right away that uh, this is just not right. But how often do we then brush it aside and just keep going? Because our flesh says, well, uh, not this time. I'm not going to say anything this time, or I'm just going to go along, or I'm going to follow with somebody else. I'm going to go do this or that that I've been told is not good for a Christian to do. I'm going to go do this in the world, or I'm going to be part of this uh, speaking that's blasphemous or, or maybe being a false witness. I'm just going to go along with it. No, don't be like Pilate. Listen to the voice. You know, the Spirit speaks, okay? And the Spirit doesn't speak something, anything different than what's written in the Word of God. Study the Word so you know what's right. Listen. Come to hear the Word of God so you're armed with the truth, so you know what's right. And don't be like Pilate and, you know, he was concerned about the feelings of the people. He was worried about his reputation. The truth is the best in every case. Pilate was more afraid and so then he brought Jesus into the, into the judgment hall, we would say. And I'm not confident who was there when Pilate talked to Jesus, but maybe they were, at least this morning I'd like to consider that maybe they were by themselves. And Pilate said, why don't you talk to me? Don't you know that I have the power to crucify thee? Don't you know that, you know, I, got, I have the power and the authority to put you to death. And Jesus answers him. And this goes against what I just said because this is written so there was a witness to, to these words. And Jesus said, Thou couldst have no power at all against me except it were given thee from above. So even this sinful man Pilate who is not following even his thoughts within him yet he has been given power from above that is the power of this of our even government in this place God allowed this Jesus allowed this remember that all these places remember that he said he had the, po his power, the power to lay his life down and to take it up again. But he also said, Therefore he that delivereth me unto thee hath the greater sin. Those that cried out, crucify him. And those that did all those evil things against him. And 
How can we separate ourselves from that? Can we really say that while we weren't there, that 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 was just those people of those days, that was just the Jews, or that was just the Roman soldiers? No, it was it was our our sins, it was us as mankind. We were there together. The greater sin. But oh, that even that greater sin was atoned for on the cross of Calvary. And so then, even further, Pilate is seeking to release him. And the Jews cried out, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. They were working Pilate. They knew what they were doing. They were trying to convince Pilate and make sure that he would not change his mind and that he would give them authority to put him to death. The Jews themselves did not have that authority, but, but Caesar's government, through Pilate, did. And so then when Pilate heard that, he brought Jesus forth and sat him down in the judgment seat And there, again, he spoke to him. And then he said to the Jews, Behold your king. Yet they did not receive that. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate further asked, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests, just think, those that... The, let's say the, the most should have been the most religious and the most knowledgeable in the word of God said we have no king but Caesar we'd rather have the rulers of this world than to be under the authority of Jesus Christ and so they took Jesus away he delivered them he delivered Jesus onto that crowd that wanted to put him to death. And so they did. They brought him away. Away to the cross. Away to death and more suffering and more bleeding and death. But before we end this morning, I'd like also to consider that being at the judgment seat. When Jesus was there at the judgment seat, you know, there there was Pilate who had the authority to put him to death. You know, he had also had the power to, to let him go, but he was convinced, he was moved to do that by the people around that were crying to crucify him. But when we are at the judgment seat, and maybe today there is one here, like there, off, there usually is, you know, in an assembly of this size, there are those who are maybe are not Christians, who are not confessing faith, who are in unbelief, who are not believing. You know, and for you this day, how would it be when you are at a judgment seat? If you were brought before the judgment seat of God today, what would you you say? Would you be able to say that, well, I am not guilty? No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't have any answer. You might make excuses and say that, well, there's others that are worse than me. Or that, well, you know, someday I want to believe. Maybe before I die, you know, I will want to be right with God so that I'm not lost in eternity in the fires of hell. But what is, how is it today before the judgment seat of God that what is your answer? There's probably no answer because there really isn't if we don't have Jesus Christ. 
if we are not in faith today. And for you today, I would encourage you to seek God. And it's good that you are in the hearing of the word of God so that the word of God has such power that it can break into your heart and cause you to, to repent so that God would begin a work within your heart that you would have sorrow over your sin and you would begin to see that oh, maybe it was me that was there saying to, to those on that day that crucify him, away with him. But may God draw you by his word into his grace and so that one day you could hear even in your own ears that you are a child of God and that your sins are forgiven. And even this day I'd want to encourage you to believe that, you know, that your sins truly are forgiven. You know, Jesus did pay for all of your sins and they are forgiven in Jesus' name and blood. But Christians... You know, when we stand before the judgment seat, the judge is not Pilate. It's not a, a man that can be moved by emotion or, or feelings. But the one on the judgment seat is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has a heart full of grace and mercy and forgiveness toward you, child of God. And even this day, he speaks to you through his word that he is merciful and kind and that he has paid all of your debts and all of your sins and they are also all forgiven every one of them all of your iniquities and evil thoughts and deeds they also are forgiven O child of God they also are forgiven in it is holy name and it is precious blood Oh, we give thanks today for, for those that, that know this Jesus and even today have just a little bit heard of this Jesus in Pilate's judgment hall. And we, we give thanks even today for this wonderful Savior that went through this for us. And even though it's a, when we think about Jesus with his crown of thorns and his purple robe, and we say, beautiful Savior. We look beyond that outside and we see into the depths of his merciful heart towards us. Thank you, Jesus, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let us close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that Jesus in Pilate's judgment hall would be revealed to us and that we could be receive comfort from that and joy from that and that we could look with thankfulness upon it and that we would have thanksgiving within our hearts for his great mercy and love for us now the lord bless thee and keep thee the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen.